or colding. All right, so again, for the, uh, the foundation material, just so we're all on the same page, you've probably seen some of these, all of these, none of these before. And I, I really just want to um, make sure that when I refer or use something technical that we're on the same page with that, um, uh, that terminology. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to see what your link is. So we'll just watch on the screen and we'll get you set up here in a, um, when we finish up. All right, so the uh, the vise, um, we hard jaws, a vise with hard jaws is going to be the most common. Uh, soft jaws are going to be kind of dedicated to that part or something where we want to be able to drill into the jaws or machine into the jaws a little bit. Basically, aluminum or softer steel. And then uh, fixtures pretty much fall into the category of dedicated. I have pictures of my. Uh, one of the dedicated, and that's one I'll probably bring in next week is one of the examples. Um, so I do have to add a slide for the other uh, dedicated, but universal is probably what I go to first. And that's just a plate with a bunch of holes, um, a, uh, uh, a dowel pin, and uh, some tablets. Um, call it closers. All right, so multi-axis or just being able to hold round stock in orientate, different orientations. Multi-jaw, multi I would say, is like three-jaw, three, three jaw, four-jaw. But then I came across and was uh, was given a two-jaw, which is kind of an oddball, but it looks like it would work pretty good for the five-axis or for something uh, uh, kind of a crossover with soft jaws or something else. So uh, angle plates and then clamping and clamping forces. All of, um, all of the, um, the fun stuff, I have a link here for the Carlane website. It's one of the... Um, uh, the better references, and hopefully it will connect. All right, so workpiece, fixture, and design principles. I actually spent the uh, the seven dollars on Amazon to download this to my Kindle. So when I was laying awake, uh, you know, freaking out about uh, all of the lecture material that I was going to present to uh, to Mastercam uh, class, I could sit down and read this and calm myself down. Locating and clamping principles. Uh, clamping forces and standard clamp uh, uh, strap clamps. So a lot of the pictures that you're going to see in the um, uh, in the, the presentation kind of refer back to and utilize. They're not as maybe not as sophisticated. Some of them might be a little more sophisticated. And then the uh, clamping force calculations based on tools. And I said uh, the the handbook is available for purchase. If you want to get a little further into it. All right, so. Uh, but mainly that whole handbook is what is in those two or three um, two or three items. All right, so kind of a combination of uh, of all our stuff. I really am just gonna. Ah, I did not want to do that. Present? No, just present. All right, so I'm still kind of figuring out what the um, the captions down here are doing besides annoying me. All right, so. Uh, the vices, one of the things to keep in mind that this was early on uh, when I first um, uh, bought my machine, the, um, I had two of the D675s and one 3600, which was great. What I didn't realize is the 3600, the bed is about 5 sixteenths taller. So when you do a half inch retract to save on those rapids and it goes buzzing over to the second work offset and it's only an eighth of an inch above the part and you know, you're, you're sitting there with the feed hold and that instant panic of, oh, I'm going to run into something. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Did you make a reference point for that move, though? Um, yeah, I just increased it a little bit. I, I took, took the retract and clearance up to from, from a half inch or whatever up to an inch. Uh, so, you know, got a little, uh, little aggressive there. So this is, um, you know, basically the, uh, the, uh, the T-slot plate that's on the machine, uh, the universal tooling plate. This happens to be 980 holes in a piece of 70, 70 75. And so they are alternating uh, quarter inch dowel pin holes with quarter 20s. So I had actually built a, a set of clamps that were set up for the quarter because we're doing a bunch of small stuff. And uh, really, I haven't, I haven't ever overcome those quarter inch uh, clamps. Um, I've, I've put the clamps in the wrong position, which allowed the plates to slide around underneath them. Uh, didn't have enough height, didn't have enough downforce. Uh, but for the most part, um, I've never 
never really had a had a problem with the quarter inch clamps. We use a lot of the three eighths, and then the standard, of course, is the uh, the half inch. So you can kind of see the quarter inch uh, uh, strap clamps or um, toe clamps uh, holding the vices down, and then in between the vices holding uh, holding those down. So the clamp is uh, you know kind of everything on the accessories. Uh, the D6 uh, or the 3600V. The advantage here being a CNC vise is that if you put it on its side or you put it on end, it has got the uh, parallelism and perpendicularity to put it out of position. And then a uh, standard work stop and the bar work stop. We're going to talk a little bit more about the other uh, work stops um, as we go through a little further. Uh, so the soft jaws, usually when we make blanks, we'll take a full bar of whatever inch by two and a half inches, two inches, and we'll just make a bunch of blanks and stack them up so that when we get to whatever it is that we're trying to cut, we can make the profile in it. Downside of the aluminum is that these were holding uh, a 43 series chromoly, so the harder you tighten them, eventually you're going to deform into that material. Right, so I make um, make a couple comments about having a torque wrench. Uh, these are definitely uh, ones that if I'm doing a production run of 100 pieces, I want to use that torque wrench. So the first one is clamped the same as the last one. And then um, it also saves a little bit of the wear and tear on the, uh, the soft jaw. Uh, so this was so that I could do a deburr and run into the, uh, the jaw without damaging the, uh, the tool or the, uh, the jaws. Um, universal tooling plates or sacrificial plate have every every different size. So uh, the de defining uh, geometry is that we're going to make uh, this base as flat as possible, whether we're putting it in a vise or clamping it to something else. Uh, if the sides are parallel and perpendicular, then I can set it up on end, put it out of position for uh, clamping in holes. And it really becomes universal that I can put the the, the primary datum being the uh, the the, uh, the top of the um, uh, the plate, and then two pins for my uh, secondary datum and one pin for my tertiary datum. So this is a quick example of placing the um, uh, the bar uh, the plate stock in. It banks in and it's repeatable on two pins and one pin. And then we put the uh, the toe clamps in. Do all of the work on this side. Um, actually, I think this one was a clearance issue that I only had two. Typically, we'll have three points. One's not going to be good enough because it will move, it will slide. Two still has the potential to orbit. Three gives me three points of contact back to that primary datum that very, very hard to make three points of contact move. All right, and then... Um, and we do the operations, then we switch the clamps to the other side or to a clearance side, and we can go ahead and um, uh, machine the other other parts. So that requires usually requires a machine stop. We send the spindle home, we send the table forward, we stop the machine, turn the coolant off, and make our clamp changes, and then uh, push the button, let it go again. So some different uh, clamping styles. If it is already a finished surface, maybe a machine the uh, the other side. Then we would put uh, the little uh, scraps to make sure that we're not galling putting uh, uh, putting those marks into finished surfaces. And then another example uh, was a small bracket. These are 440 with uh, 3 16 or 8 inch dowel pins. So again, being able to locate uh, because they don't make uh, the uh, the clamps that small. Then we I just um, uh, loaded up a piece of uh, stock and just ran a bunch. And really didn't care how they look. I just main thing is if I run into one of them, they're aluminum. They're holding down with enough of uh, uh, the clamping force on the button head that I'm not too worried about um, uh, running into anything. Probably the other one of note is after you've clamped everything down, using long enough dowel pins that you recognize that they're still there if they're still there, because you really don't want that tool to come around, especially in the aluminum, 9,000, 10,000 RPM at 40 inches a minute and make that horrific sound of running into a dowel pin. So it's kind of a check of always put the dowel pins in the same spot. I, I do a count of, yes, I put three in the table. I have three sitting on the bench. The, uh, the collet closers then, um, this one actually has indexing, so it'll do basic uh, fourth axis. My introduction to kind of fourth axis was 
uh, robot end effectors, robot grippers that we made a, uh, a nose, uh, nose piece and clamped, and then you had to uh, release and uh, count number of indexes. So we were the rotary, manual rotary, and that, as painful as that was, we made a bunch of parts and only ran into a few of them, you know, being out of sequence. The other style is just a quick clamp for the uh, the 5C, so without the, uh, the rotation, putting this one goes in the horizontal or the vertical orientation. Uh, this one, just a vertical orientation, and of course, I get this, it's in the casting, it has a little bit of an arc and a little bit of arc. First thing I do is chuck it up in the mill and make two sides parallel so that I can put it in the vise, so that I can uh, locate it if I, uh, if I need uh, this, this base to have a little bit more repeatability. Vertical three jaw, a lot of times we'll find a, uh, a used or, um, or purchased specifically for the um, the orientation and again can set up for soft jaws if it's not a scroll chuck if it has the bolt-on uh, jaws then we can also make the uh, the soft jaws so I think this one is set up for the uh, the scroll and we just um, you know can turn them around uh, go from the interior to the exterior but uh, have a little bit of relief for drainage different clamping positions for the different tooling plates if I'm going right to the T slots or if I'm using the uh, the tooling plate can usually pick up some of those and then I'll snap some pictures of the two jaw or the four jaw or the uh, the bolt and throw in there angle plate the standard uh, setup different size angle plates for the uh, for the parts and then we get into the different style of toe clamps so the one on the uh, the car lane site that has that little dimple that gives you a little bit more tangency problem is anytime that you get to where the uh, the clamping. So we use uh, socketed cap screws quite a bit. Occasionally I'll use a hex, uh, hex screw to set those heights. If that screw is set a little bit too low and this angles up, it's actually trying to push the material away. So you want to get it in position to where you're level or the nose has a little down angle. I'm going to find that graphic and, and add that one in here so that you can kind of see where those clamping forces come in and looking at um, uh, the down position. Toggle clamps are the uh, the four links, uh, different, um, you know, commonly the, the Distecos um, have the uh, the push-pull, and those would be clip, uh, quick clamping, but not a lot of tool pressure. Right? We're going to be able to start to overcome some of these clamp with the clamping forces if we get too aggressive with the tools. So for production, if we're a drilling jig or for uh, light machining, these are going to work great. Same with the Mighty Bites and the uh, kind of the downforce uh, clamps. The downside to this style with the serrated edge is it's going to kind of dig in and gall into the material. So they work pretty well, but I don't really want to use them on a finished surface. The Mighty Bites, um, I think, will show up in the, uh, the facing operation if we, uh, if we get over to that. Uh, but the Mighty Bites come in different sizes. They have recommended spacing away from the edge of the part. If you're trying to do saw cuts though, then that variation is gonna be a little more difficult to manage, right? But again, you either love or hate Mighty Bites because depending on how aggressive you wanna be, you're going to be able to overcome the clamping pressures that these generate. And then, oops, all right? So that small change in tone, the, uh, the three quarter inch, I think I mentioned it on the, the last, uh, last time and on the video that uh, three quarter inch OSG, three flute running at 4,000 at 40 inches a minute. Um, all of a sudden there was just a noticeable, wow, that doesn't sound right. And by the time I hit feed hold and opened the doors, turned the coolant off, opened the doors and went, yeah, that's a little too exciting. That's too close. All right. So what happened is my saw cuts were pretty close for the previous five parts. But on this part, close wasn't good enough. We were probably 10 to 15 thousandths narrower on this edge, which allowed this side to pivot. So when I measure, I know that that floating jaw is gonna be able to rotate and give a little bit, but not that much. So if it gets much more than about um, the, the five or 10 thousandths out of parallel, it's time to uh, clamp these up and just take a facing cut off of the side to ensure that that parallelism is there, that we're getting those good clamping forces in the vise.
Um, so next one is the uh, the speeds and feeds. I think I'll save that for when we start to program, and we'll call it good.